In the early 1930s, the de Havilland Aircraft Company of Stag Lane Edgware acquired some open farmland north of London for a new headquarters. Hatfield Aerodrome became the centre for a worldwide aviation enterprise. The de Havilland Tiger Moth was only one of the outstanding designs built at Hatfield. All de Havilland aircraft had a rare and totally distinctive style. I've always liked light aeroplanes and the Tiger Moth is a classic. I trained most of the British pilots during the war. Nearly 8,000 Tiger Moths built. It's a classic aeroplane and it's great fun. Dick Bishop's father, R.E., had, second to Sir Geoffrey, become the company's most talented designer. And I was a de Havilland apprentice at the time, and I was dispatched with a drawing on an envelope to go down to the wood shop, to the mock-up shop, to get some off-cut supply. So I found the foreman in charge and asked him for some bits of ply. He asked, what for? I said, a job for Mr. Bishop. He said, which bishop? Because there was the company doctor was also bishop. And I said, R.E. And he said, oh, that miserable old bugger, I suppose it's for his bloody boat again, is it? So many outstanding aeroplanes from Hatfield, so many innovative aeroplanes, but I suppose it would have to be the Comet, the most significant. Many people have said it was a bigger step for aviation than Concorde was. First jet transport aeroplane immediately after the war would have to be the most significant, I suppose. Name the location anywhere in the world. The 146 fits the picture perfectly. So perfectly that this aircraft will operate from remote airstrips and link townships with major population centers. It'll bring jet travel to the developing world. From a pilot's point of view, it's a classic de Havilland aeroplane. All de Havilland aeroplanes are delightful to fly, um, largely because Sir Geoffrey, of course, was the test pilot as well as the chief designer originally. And the 146 is exactly the same. It's delightful to fly. It has no vices, very flexible aeroplane, and is now becoming very popular. The airlines are becoming very keen on it. The success story that was Hatfield was, in the late 1980s, drawing to a close. A worldwide drop in demand for commercial aircraft due to a severe recession resulted in drastic rationalization. And in 1992, the closure of the site was announced. The workers at Hatfield, winners of two Queen's Awards for export achievement, realized that the regional jet market could not sustain the site. In 1994, on a windswept April day, the de Havilland Moth Club arranged a final bittersweet open day to celebrate the part de Havilland at Hatfield played in world aviation. Lord of space and time, we bow our heads remembering those who gave their talents, devotion, and even their lives to make Hatfield and its aircraft, famous the world over, because I believe that where we stand is, in a sense, holy ground. Whilst the chipmunk took off to make one final fly past, it was a time to reflect. On the machines, and the men who, from this Hatfield factory, influenced the course of aviation worldwide for more than 60 years. Clear aims and steady application have produced technical results of a high order. And to conclude, I give you my thanks and good wishes 
and hope that the old spirit will long animate our joint endeavours. I believe it was the most innovative group of aircraft designers anywhere in the world. How many other companies designed a jet airliner, designed their own engine and put it in it? The Trident with the world's first civil auto land. There are so many things at Hatfield.